So good afternoon, community. Welcome to the Network of Care session focusing on community planning. I'm Stacy Hudson, the Training and Engagement Facilitator with California Health Collaborative, and I am very excited to be hosting the 11th Network of Care session today. We are happy to be joined by our partners at King's Referral Exchange, Unite Us, and Kings County Public Health Department. If this is your first time with us today, we encourage you to access our previous recordings to support your understanding of what has occurred in these sessions in the past. And uh, my colleague Ronnie will be sharing in the chat the link to our Learn Worlds platform where you can access the recordings of, of our past events. It's a great opportunity to do um, some interactive review if you've been there and just want to go back and, and review what we've we've gone over in the past or if you haven't been to these sessions before so that you can catch up to where we're at now. And for those of you, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. We're so glad to have you. Here are just a few um, housekeeping items to keep note of. Please be aware that this session is being recorded. If you're attending remotely, please be sure that your, um, your Zoom microphone is on mute. We will have opportunities for discussion later where you might be able to unmute yourself and share your thoughts or questions. If you are having audio issues, um, you can join by phone. And again, make sure that your mic is on mute. Um, and please type your name and affiliations in the chat if you have not done so yet, and um, make sure to check your name and your pronouns and rename if necessary. So, Kings County ACES Network of Care, with funding from ACES Aware, is a collaboration of Kings County Department of Public Health, California Health Collaborative, Kings Partnership for Prevention, Kings United Way, Adventist Health, ARIA Health, EMT Associates, and Family Healthcare Network. We are very much appreciative to the work of all our partners who have committed to moving this initiative forward to improve the health and well being of the individuals, families, and the communities in which we live. And again, for those of you who just joined the room, make sure that you share your name and affiliation in the chat. I saw a few of you just pop in. To start off, uh, we're gonna do a quick recap of the purpose of the King's Referral Exchange before we welcome representatives from Unite Us. And then we will be um, going over the commitment of care with a specific focus on the silver tasks. And then we will go into a deeper discussion about sustainability of the network of care here in Kings County. During our last session in July, we discussed membership to the Network of Care. A lot of you who were here were able to give us some really um, essential feedback and we will be um, sharing with you the changes that we've made in just a little bit. We also explored trauma-informed policy as part of that process of forming sustainable practices to address ACEs, ACE-associated health conditions and other adversities in our communities. Today, we will be focusing more directly on the subject of sustainability. As our grant will be ending in September, we hope to look to the future and work as a community to determine ways that this work can be carried forward. An essential aspect to building a sustainable infrastructure is establishing a care coordination system that connects resources across key sectors in our community. Here to provide us with more on that subject is Referral Exchange Specialist Yvette Oliveira from Kings United Way. Thank you for joining us today, Yvette. No, thank you for having us. Hi, everyone. My name is Yvette Oliveira, and I am the new Referral Exchange Specialist. I'm here to help with any local support you, the organization, may need with navigating the Kings Referral Exchange. A little background. Kings United Way has partnered with Unite Us and their community information and exchange platform to create the Kings County Referral Exchange. This platform will support the community's efforts to cut ACEs in half in this generation 
by providing a closed loop referral system using the Unite Us platform that enables providers to safely and confidently coordinate patient care and community organizations on the platform. Connecting patients to the appropriate resources that help reduce toxic stress and address any needs the clients may have. The referral exchange is a versatile tool to support primary care, healthcare teams and organizations and the community and their ability to screen, treat and heal. Here with us today are the Unite Us team, Mercedes and Reed, who will discuss frequently asked questions and concerns regarding confidentiality, interoperability, and costs. If you would like to request a demo for the King's Referral Exchange, feel free to contact me. I will be putting my information in the chat box. Hello, hello everyone. Mercedes Carmona with Unite Us, Community Engagement Manager supporting the Central Valley. I believe my counterpart, Reed, is on. Um, I can't see him, but I hope, hopefully he will hop on soon. I know he's coming from another call. Um, we are just really excited. Thank you so much for the time. I know we have a very, very tight um, schedule. I just wanted to really be able to provide this space, both Reed and I, to be able to answer any questions folks um, have. Um, you know, with the Unite Us team, we're really, you know, um, big on trust and transparency. And so we really wanted just to be able to um, create that space so that we can um, answer any questions that you have. Um, I see three here. I will let Reed take that first one once he hops on. Um, as you may have, um, participated in some of the demos. Um, with CBOs, it is free of cost. Thank you so much for our you know, health partners, um, such as Kaiser Permanente um, and Blue Shields. I will say Kaiser, we've really, um, you know, uh, statewide, um, they have been um, our big champions and really um, doing that whole person care um, and supporting us um, through their Thrive Local as we are um, connecting health and social care uh, partners on the platform. Um, I will say, um, you know, in regards to the platform being apart from others, um, I understand it's a new way of, you know, model of care really through with communities and, you know, this is all going to work if we all are united and joined together. I know many, many um, folks questions will ask, but we use so many different systems. Again, the Unite Us platform really provides that space where we can be cohesive um, and all connect together in doing that coordinated care network um, and really reducing those barriers and those fragmented systems um, that so many of our families unfortunately have to navigate. And as we're thinking through those critical times right now with the pandemic, and we're really being able to look at that data um, and, and, and see that many of our families, you know, it's not just, you know, one or two um, services that they're needing, it may be three or four. And so really, again, you know, you all are the experts, uh, you know, we're a technology partner that's really coming alongside you um, and supporting this tool to really um, help you all tell your story and really be able to, you know, share your, your, be able for you all to highlight your wins um, in your community, as well as be able to share um, in your community, you know, the additional needs um, that your community may need and the additional uh, funding. Um, I will check in to see if Reed has hopped on yet. Um, before I talk about safe and confidentiality um, components. Okay, I don't see that he's on. Um, so again, Unite Us, client privacy is our priority. Um, we have, you know, those robust, um, you know, networks and certifications, um, you know, and those, uh, our high trust certification, which is at the highest in regards to keeping all of our um, data secure. Um, not everyone has permissions to be able to see um, 
clients, you know, pathways. Again, we do have special uh, permissions, um, you know, organization uh, roles, user roles. Um, we do have the sensitive uh, service types that are in the platform, as well as um, setting up organizations as sensitive. So um, when you send a referral over to another organization, only the two of you would be able to see that on the platform. And again, um, we can do um, individual uh, demonstrations to be able um, to show that information to you. Um, but again, uh, I, I just want to make sure that folks understand that when you are sending a referral over from an organization from A to B, client consent does have to happen in order for that you know, referral um, to get processed and sent over. Um, we have client consent in over um, 50 languages, um, as well as six different ways to do client consent. Um, I will say again with those um, sensitive service types, um, you know, we we again really want to make sure that we are, um, you know, protecting our clients' information um, at the utmost high. Um, and again, we've been through the rigorous um, certification process for our high trust. Um, again, we were born in the veteran space, so uh, we really, you know, want to make sure that folks are not having to retell their story over and over again. Um, you know, city, you know, um, entities, government, um, CBOs, you know, all of us working together in this cohesive uh, coordinated care network, um, we do need to be, um, you know, at the forefront in regards to making sure that our um, data is secure. And we are very, very proud to say that we're able to do so. I'll check back in to see if my counterpart Reed is online. And if Reed is not available, I would like to see if our community has any additional questions at this point. Um, in our last session, there were there were a few questions about the Unitas platform that people had expressed. So I just wanted to give this um, opportunity for those of you that did have questions about this platform and. Um, if you if you want any clarification. Yes, we are closed loop bi directional um, platform, um, but there's so much more to the platform. It's, it's more than just referrals. And so really being able to, um, you know, share that through the demo presentation and we can definitely set up something with Stacy. So it's just Kings County focused if needed. Um, but again, I, I it is a closed loop bi-directional um, electronic referral platform um, does have, you know, again, we want to make sure that social care is up there with healthcare um, services. And so uh, the platform even has the um, capacity for payments. Um, and I was hoping that Reed would be able to be on the line to be able to share um, more information on that, but I can definitely um, do that um, at a later time in a demo demonstration. And just a reminder for those who perhaps came on after Yvette was on here sharing, if you are wanting to set up a demo, if your organization has not yet done that, you can contact Yvette Oliveira from Kings United Way. She is the one that will be setting up those demos. And I believe she did share her email in the chat. Yvette, maybe you can share it one more time just for those who, um, who were not maybe joined in after you shared that, just in case. Sure. I'm going to be adding it to the um, chat now. Thank you. And then hey, I have Marcy. Yes, great question. So is United Platform throughout California? Yes, we are. We are actually, um, we just rolled out in six different, um, six additional counties. So we're actually now in 80% of California. And so, um, you know, as you're joining the network in Kings, you know, Kings County, you, you not only have access to the folks in Kings County, but across the Unite California network. And that's, again, the great thing about the platform is that it's really focusing on that coordinated care network and really braiding our services. We know, you know, our families don't live, you know, in hospitals, uh, they live in communities and oftentimes they do travel. And so really making sure that again, we are breaking down those barriers um, for them if they are needing additional services um, throughout their life journey.
Does anyone else have any questions about the Unitas platform? Stacey, I, I know we're short on time. Do you mind if I say a few words in Reed's absence? Sure. I'm not sure if Reed did Reed join the call yet. There oh, you go. <laughs> Reed, like Reed, Reed you got exactly my name. Right time. Perfect timing, Reed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was told 2:20, and um, but it was previously got a little ahead of schedule. Okay. So, um, Mercedes already shared some information on on these um, kind of these first questions here, and. Um, we wanted to know if you could provide a little more detail. Perhaps um, I can get from the community, is there any specific question here that you want more detail on? Whether that is um, the cost or um, what it, what it's set, how it's set apart or if you're interested in learning more about the confidentiality. Stacey, are you sharing your, I'm sorry, I just jumped in. So I'm, <laughs> it, it might be my technical issues. Are you sharing your screen? I actually just have a black box. I am. Can everyone see my screen? Oh, so it's something on my end. Then, huh? um, so the questions, the, I'll, I'll read the questions to you, Reed. The first question okay. is, would, what would this platform cost my organization? And um, Mercedes was able to share briefly that it is free to um, community-based organizations. So we're hoping that you can go into maybe the difference between those that it may have a cost for and those that it would not. Yeah, sure. And let me um, let me say hi. And um, sorry for, it sounds like jumping in into conversation a little bit. Um, I see some familiar faces and then that good to see you again. Um, my, can I do like just a quick intro and background and thing? Great. Um, my uh, role here, and I can now see your screen, Stacey, thank you, um, is as director of what we call network development. Um, and that's kind of our, um, if, you're, well, if you're familiar with our model, like kind of building networks of organizations is at the core of what we do. Um, and my job um, is a combination of uh, it's actually quite a bit of policy work, um, as well as kind of business strategy. Um, <clears throat> I have a public health background, a lean policy, I actually spent eight years in DC um, within the executive branch. And I've long worked at the intersections of healthcare policy, public programs, and, uh, and technology. Um, and so my time here at Unite Us, been about a year and a half, is fit squarely at the Kind of at the intersection of a Venn diagram. So I feel very fortunate to be where I am and to be able to connect with folks like you that are actually like doing this work on the ground. Um, so that's just want you to know my background, my context. Um, whereas Mercedes works um, uh, more so on the community side, I end up working more with our health system partners as well as with our, our public partners, whether you're county governments or, or states. Um, and I'm based in Oakland. Okay, so that's that's my intro. Um, again, great to be here. Um, from a cost perspective, um, the yeah, it's it's it, it's um, it's pretty straightforward. There's some nuances though that we can parse out for particular types of organizations. Um, broadly, our philosophy and like the way Unite Us thinks, and this is like why I'm here based on my health policy background, is that you know we want to get money um, that is uh, on the healthcare side that has been historically used for like tertiary late stage interventions further into the community. Um, and our business model fundamentally leans into that framework, um, which is being driven by you know, the Affordable Care Act and certainly CalAIM um, and other uh, types of initiatives. So in that vein of the folks that are on the community side, those that are receiving referrals and like doing the, the work and providing services uh, do not pay uh, for licenses to use uh, the, the standard Unite Us platform. Um, rather we charge health system partners, um, whether they're um, uh, you know, Medicaid plan, Medicare Advantage plan, et cetera, um, and or uh, large healthcare systems, your dentists of the world and things like that. Um, Government kind of falls in the middle. Local government, uh, we give uh, a number of licenses for free because 
or understand how working in government works. Um, and they often provide a lot of services. So they're receiving referrals for some of their programs. Um, and then they also um, are often sending referrals. So for government programs, um, counties actually get 75 licenses for free. And then we tend to charge after that. Um, health centers, including federally qualified health centers, um, uh, tribal health centers, um, uh, behavioral health um, services providers embedded with them, community-based centers, um, those actually receive, uh, they get unlimited licenses for free as well, because we see them as being core to the, the community fabric. Um, so broadly, CBOs don't pay for licenses, health system does. There's a few that are kind of in the middle, like, um, like counties and, uh, and a number of others. Let me see if that broad sweeping stroke Ah, what, is, what does the license mean? Okay, yeah, I can start there. Um, so most people, when they think of Unitas, they think about our platform. And, and um, well, the, the heart of our work and, and what Mercedes does is engage in organizations across the community and help cultivate conversations about how um, uh, we can um, you know, work in a tighter way um, to get folks connected to care. Um, how that work happens is, uh, is is largely over the Unitas platform. And so our platform facilitates closed-loop referrals um, uh, in a HIPAA compliant, 42 CFR part two compliant, fully secure, um, other acronyms compliant manner. Um, there's also some light, um, some light like care coordination that can happen um, over the over the platform. Um, fundamentally, the platform is what brings the community together and allows them to do their work um, and, and hopefully, we think, like a more modern, streamlined way. Um, we have other services as well, um, actually, you know, data services, um, a suite of data services, uh, for example, um, that are like add-ons to the platform. And I'm happy to talk about like the full range of products and services. We actually have a solution that's like focused on supporting, um, if folks are familiar with CalAIM and the enhanced care management ILOS provision, um, we actually have like a module that's like specific for that to facilitate invoicing between organizations. Happy to sort of stretch out all of our capabilities, but know that the core of what we do um, and, and again, what most people think about is, is that platform. So each individual user of the platform has a unique username and password. So each individual user has a license. Um, so that was a long, <laughs> long-winded explanation, but basically each individual user of the platform um, gets a license. So again, community-based organizations, FQHCs, community health centers, um, unlimited licenses for no cost. Uh, David has asked, What's the typical user connection? Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, most folks just use the web, or what we call our web-based platform. Um, so it's browser-based, it's in the cloud. Um, and uh, you just, uh, just to access our web-based platform, you just need the internet and a browser. Um, I would say 95% of, of all of our users across the country just use the web-based platform. Um, we do have the ability to integrate with a number of systems. I'm happy to kind of stretch this part of the conversation out as well. Most of our healthcare partners um, are interested in our integrations with EHRs. So we integrate, for example, with the, the major EHRs such as Epic, Cerner, um, eClinical Works, um, a few others coming down the line. And we integrate with a number of systems that are based in the community such as Apricot, um, I'm happy to kind of like tease out if there are any particular examples or any particular systems of question. Um, uh, so yeah, we can build out integrations, but most of the users actually across the country um, and, and in particular in California and in particular on the community side um, are really just using our web-based application. So they're accessing it through the internet. Um, I jumped in and I introduced myself. I answered questions. Um, David, you have a couple others in there. Um, I don't know. Do you want to clarify your question around flat file extracts and imports? No, you answered the question whether 
whether there was an interface uh, or do the community who have their own softwares all connect or just work in the tool when you said they work in the tool. What about a grouping option if you're looking for a referral base? Is it grouped by county or some other sorting or filtering option so you don't have to look through LA's options if you don't, if you're in Northern California? Yeah, um, uh, it's uh, <clears throat> the way, and I don't know if we have time to pull up the application now, we can follow up with an actual demo. Um, if, if you'd like, but the way the platform works is that it's actually map viewed. There's kind of, there's like list and then a map view and it defaults the map based on your specific location. Um, the location of your organization that's inputted. So you would only see first and foremost the organizations in your area. You can zoom out and you can search elsewhere in the state, but that is the default presentation that you'd have. Did that get to what you're looking for, David? Yep, thanks. Okay. Um, and I do want to just, I appreciate these questions. I want to make sure that our folks in Kings County are able to ask some questions as well, um, if they have any, because, um, you know, we can certainly, you can certainly elaborate on things specifically for people in demos. And that's where um, we'd invite you, if you have a lot more questions, to make sure that you're scheduling demos with Unitas. Um, and for our Kings County folks, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to open up um, and share your questions or put them in the chat. I also wanted to answer, um, I know that Denise had wrote, um, she wanted to know a little bit more of the relationship between Unite Us and Kings United Way. Um, so the program is the Kings Referral Exchange and the platform that we chose was Unite Us. Um, I don't know if Nanette, you wanted to elaborate a little bit more on that, um, just so that way people understand. Sure, um, just quickly, we actually, Kings United Way actually, we operate a regional homeless management information system, and we also operate the countywide 211 system. And as an old school, old timer in um, providing human services, um, back in the day, you know, we all wrote, um, paper referrals for our clients, send them on their way, and who knows if they showed up where they needed to show up. Um, we actually engaged Reed um, well before the ACEs initiative came, came to our attention. We were very interested in bringing a, a community referral exchange to our community. We had become aware of the CIE or the uh, community information exchange that San Diego operates. And we felt like there was a place for us to, um, to bring this to our partners here in Kings County. So initially, um, we reached out to Unite Us and had started the discussion to bring um, this platform to our community for all providers, not just healthcare providers. And that's still our intent because um, United Way is committed to this project. This project will live um, we have secured a, um, thanks to First Five Kings County, we've secured four years of funding for the Kings County Referral Exchange and this project will continue. So our partnership with Unite Us was born out of um, their mission, vision and values, which is that community benefit organizations need to have access um, at no cost. And um, that was very important to us. And we also work very closely with our community partners to look at, because when you're asking community benefit organizations or nonprofits to operate another platform, um, you really have to take into consideration their own capacity. And so Unite, United Way is here to support that end um, as well. So just a little background on that relationship. We, we engaged Reed a long time ago. <laughs> so um, yeah. So excited to have this in our community. I, I think it's it's um, super important. I agree with Nanette. Um, Nanette, there is a question as well of um, collaboration with Unite Us and 211. Um, 211 is another or, um, program that United Way has. And um, can you just elaborate a little bit with that as well? Sure. I'm actually going to turn it over to Reed. We have had some extensive discussions around um, um, integrating or interfacing our 211 platform with Unite Us. Unite Us, um, the 
Kings County Referral Exchange will not take the place of 211. We want to be clear about that. Um, it is a complement to that service. And I'll let Ree talk about the, the interface work that we've talked about and, and are planning to do. Yeah, thanks for that. And before resuming in on, on Kings County, and um, the 211 I know goes across a couple of counties. Um, we actually work with United Ways and 211 all around the country. Um, and so it's a very natural partnership with us uh, or for us. Um, yeah, the, the core of our platform is about the facilitation of the referrals. Now built into the platform is um, our version of a resource directory. Uh, however, we're not like in the business of, of creating and maintaining resource directories. Um, meanwhile, two on ones and other types of, of organizations um, have, uh, have resource directories and an entire operation often to keep them up to date. Um, <clears throat> So there's actually a few different ways in which we partner with with two on ones, and and I'll just kind of throw United Ways in here as well. Um, one is just in the spirit of bringing the community together. Um, there's there's often like an easy, natural, um, and this is where you know, um, Net and I uh, started, um, and just like partnering up to engage the community in a shared way. Um, the second way is um, through the lens of a resource directory. Um, we do have the ability, depending upon the specific two on ones database, and thankfully uh, the one there um, is built properly, to actually integrate directly with that resource directory. So we can ingest the resources uh, from the two on two on one database um, so that users of the Unite Us platform um, can see not just the organizations that are um, onboarded or in net, what we call in network within your area, but also other organizations that are not necessarily in, in network. Um, so you have the full um, view of, uh, of, of the range of services provided in the community just through looking at um, the United S platform. So you, have to, you don't have to go elsewhere to find it. Um, and then the third way that we, we often work with two on and I think we're still kind of figuring out what exactly this looks like there, but I'll just mention it, um, is that uh, two on ones, of course, you know, receive calls and, and make referrals. And a number of our two on part two on one partnerships around the country, they actually use Unite Us. Um, not for necessarily all of those referrals. Um, there's, there's a consent process and there's specific types of referrals that are more applicable. Um, to be used uh, over United's platform versus the standard referral uh, process that currently exists, but um, it's it's definitely a third um, way that we engage and work with two-on-ones. And we just have a couple minutes left before we need to move into the next um, portion of our our afternoon. Here, does anyone else have any additional questions for Reed? Connie asked uh, a, a question related to Calain. Is, is that one I can jump in on? Let me see, Connie. Sure. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, Calain. It's, it's, it's big, it's complicated. And so we can spend two hours talking about uh, the, the specific provisions and how we can support some of them. Um, most specifically, we tend to hone that on the ECM ILOS requirements. Um, excuse me, I just got like something in my eye. Um, the ECM ILOS requirements. And that um, is fundamentally about further integrating from a, like a contractual standpoint, uh, payers with community-based service providers. Um, so we often have existing relationships with community-based service providers. Um, I'm glad we're recording this so everybody can see me figure out what just got in my eye at the right time. <laughs> um, uh, so we have to have relationships um, with many of the ILOS providers or you know, community-based organizations that may want to become ILOS providers. Um, we also have, as I mentioned, um, it's a module we call the payments module. It's an add-on to our core platform. Um, and an individual who is using let's say, let's say within an, an ECM care management team or any care management team within a payer um, can actually very quickly, if you're looking at the full list of services in the community, filter down just by your ILOS providers. So you're sending a referral to the right organization. Um, and then our payments module actually facilitates uh, billing and invoicing. 
um, as well. Um, so our goal and kind of in the spirit of supporting the CBOs is to make it as easy as possible uh, for the CBOs to do the work. You know, a lot of this is this is new for a lot of the community based organizations and those that I've talked to um, that are, are considering becoming official ILOS providers. You know, a lot of the big, I'm not even say like big healthcare types of things, you know, like the billing infrastructure um, is, is like one giant component of it. Um, we try to make it super easy for them. Um, we also try to make it, of course, very easy for the referrals to be sent to them. Um, and then hopefully, um, which is kind of at the core of what we do, we, we hope to make it easy to help bridge the gap between that payer and the LOS provider. I'm happy to speak a lot more as to what that looks like, do demos, all those types of things as well. Um, Connie, you also asked about XM EHR. I'm actually not familiar with XM. Like you say, we don't integrate with them. Um, uh, we integrate with systems that adopt the HL7 standard, uh, specifically fire, um, smart on fire, if you want to get, get more nuanced. Um, so if Exum, if you're familiar with them, um, have adopted the HL7 standard, then we can engage them and figure out what that looks like. Um, uh, but I actually haven't, I'm not familiar with them. I haven't seen them come up on a roadmap, but if it's one of particular interest, I'm happy to follow up and see if we have um, any more information on them internally. Thank you so much, Reed. We really appreciate your time and, and joining us to answer those questions. Um, and remember folks that if you're wanting more information, you can contact Yvette to set up a demo with Unitas. And I did see a question in the chat regarding our membership from Nora. Nora, we're, we're gonna be talking more about that. Um, up here, so stay tuned. All right, and uh, we're going to go ahead and dive into this a little bit more, looking at that network of care toolkit. Um, and thank you again, Mercedes and Reed. We're really grateful to have the opportunity to connect with you both and with connecting you with our community and expanding our understanding of the Unitas platform. During our May network of care session, we introduced our Kings County network of care toolkit. For those of you who are joining us for the first time today, we invite you to access that toolkit, which provides a guide to organizations that are looking to support and participate in the Kings County ACES Network of Care. And Ronnie just shared that link in the chat for you, so you can open that up yourselves. I'm also gonna be sharing my screen in just a moment to give you a little bit of glimpse at that regarding the sections we're gonna be going into today. So with, within this toolkit, you'll find the steps to the commitment of care. The commitment to care section, which is found on page 18, highlights specific tasks that organizations can uptake to become fully engaged within our network of care. Today, we will be focusing on the silver level tasks of that commitment to care, which supports our review of the Unitas platform and our understanding of how your organizational services positively impacts our efforts to screen, treat, and heal our communities from adverse childhood experiences. So just give me one second, I'm gonna share this with you guys so you can see what I am talking about. Can everyone see that commitment to care page? Yes, comes up. yes, thank you, great. All right, so, these, we have three different levels and each of those levels would re require you to complete specific tasks and then that would earn you specific um, incentives. So the bronze level being the first level, those tasks would be completing that network of care membership form, which I'm gonna be sharing or um, Ronnie will be sharing with you in the chat brief briefly um, or soon, I'm sorry. Um, and then, having at least some of your staff complete that ACES Aware Core training, okay? So if you've completed those two steps already um, and you haven't heard from us, um, please let us know so that we can move forward with getting you those incentives. Today, we're gonna be focusing on that silver level. We'll be talking more about that ABC worksheet. We're gonna be talking about how you can get more of your staff to uptake that training. And um, you will also find that ACES core training on acesaware.org. And that is where you can access that. And then of course the gold level is the final level. And that's where you would be um, 
getting that, getting your cell, your organization to register for the referral exchange um, so that we are becoming a more cohesive and connected community, making it easier for uh, providers to connect their patients with those necessary services to address and mitigate ACEs. And then you can also see on, that's page 18, that's where that can be found. And in the toolkit on page 19, you will see the incentives that are connected here in addition to those other incentives you just saw. So by completing the ACES core training, that makes you eligible for a $25 gift card to each organization or to each team that does that or completing the ABC worksheet also gets you a $25 gift card to be given to the primary staff that assist in the completion of that document. And you can also choose to pay it forward. If your organization does not allow you to accept gifts like that, you can choose to pay it forward by having us donate that in your, your name or your organization's name, just as we do with our raffle prizes at the end of these events. So that is the information found in, the, uh, in our toolkit. There's a whole lot more information in that toolkit um, about this work. So we encourage you, for those of you who have not uh, looked at that yet, to please go through it um, and pace yourselves because it is kind of a hefty document. All right. One second here, there we go. So um, shown in the toolkit, we have those three levels like you just saw. And within that bronze level, as I explained, um, it's the, this is where you would complete that membership form. And um, Ronnie's gonna be sharing that membership form with you in the chat here. Um, for those of you that are still completing that bronze level or have yet to initiate that bronze level, if you're experiencing any barriers or are in need of technical support, please do not hesitate to reach out to Linda or myself for support because we are happy to um, do whatever we can to support you through that process. We'd like to share that with the help of this community um, from our last session, we have revised our membership form and we hope that the clarifications provided will support your uptake of this membership, whether you are an individual or a leader representing your organization. We'd like to invite you to please see the link in the chat um, as it has been revised. If you still feel as though you, you need approval from your leadership to uptake that membership, uh, remember that um, in our last session, I did share um, a letter in our, um, our follow-up document. And I'm gonna share that here again. This is just a template letter that you can utilize to introduce your organization's leaders to the network of care. And when you include Linda and I in that email um, message, that helps to kind of give us that soft introduction and get that conversation started with your leaders. So we welcome you to utilize that letter if you are not a leader in your organization, but you feel compelled to, to get your organization moving forward with membership. And um, I'll just go ahead and put our email addresses in there. Karina, did you mean for this to be a direct? Thank you, Karina. I didn't realize that this was set. For some reason, it was set to send it to directly to you. So let me try that again. Ooh, glitch in my technical. All right. So Ronnie shared our emails in the chat and um, you can see that network of care letter to your leader and let me know if you're having trouble with that. We will be sending that out again um, following this event. So to um, moving into that silver commitment of care, as you can see on the slide, the silver level um, commitment to care involves an increase in the number of staff uptaking that ACEs for training and the completion of the ABC worksheet. To support the completion of the Becoming ACEs Aware training, we're offering multiple gift cards in a maximum amount of $25 to each organization or team. Organizations who complete our ABC worksheet, as I stated before, will also be given that $25 gift card to be given to the primary staff assisting in the completion of that document. This is in addition to the incentives listed on the slide. 
these incentives on the slide here are in place to support and encourage the uptake of commitment of care. And even if you haven't completed that bronze level yet, um, you can still complete that ABC worksheet. And we'll be sharing the ABC worksheet in the chat here in just a moment. We'd like to remind you, uh, for those of you who have been able to join us in the past, this stress buster um, connection activities that we had done in, back in May, we conducted in our previous sessions, we were asking you to connect your organization services directly to that stress buster wheel. Today, we're introducing this ABC worksheet, which is a form that is intended to help you assess, break down, and connect your organization services to the seven stress buster categories. By completing this form, you will inform us with details regarding the services your organization provides. This process will expand your understanding on how your services play a role, a vital role in mitigating toxic stress. We also hope you will be encouraged to join the referral exchange after you complete this ABC worksheet. And go ahead and follow that link in the chat if you're able to. Um, if you have the time now, we welcome you to fill it out now. And if not, um, pick it up on your own on time that works best for you guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and just share that with you just so you can get a glimpse of what that form looks like in case you're not able to do that now. So can everybody see that? Yes. Were you guys able to see that? See it, Stacey. Awesome. So of course, we're gonna need your, your um, information so that we know you've completed it and this will prompt us to provide you with those incentives for completing this task. Um, the very first section as asking you to assess your organization's services by prompting you to consider um, whether they are social services or whether they fit within that wheel of stress busters, right? So we're looking at um, whether it's a, a service that is for mental health services or um, supportive relationships, all those seven stress busters. Um, and break it down even farther into those seven. So this is pretty, it's pretty um, straightforward. It's just a yes or no. Does your organization provide uh, mental health um, support or of any kind? And those are broken down in that wheel. Or are you providing those mentorship, those supportive relationships? Does your organization provide education and support with sleep hygiene? Um, and all of those seven stress busters are listed here. So once you get through breaking your services down into those seven stress busters, you're gonna follow that up if your organization provides any kind of social services. And we do have a list here. It's possible that we haven't listed every single social service and that's where we would ask you to, if you have something that isn't listed to fill it out in the other section. And finally, you're gonna be putting this all together by connecting your services. Right, so that's where you would be taking those primary services and connecting them directly. So this really walks you through that connection to those seven stress busters. And again, once you complete this form and you've been able to show us that um, a, a good portion of your staff have completed the ACES Aware Core training, that would make you eligible for those silver level incentives. Does anyone have any questions for me before we move on? I know I just kind of gave you a lot of information there. So I'd like to give a pause here. I believe there is one, Stacy. Um, Connie asks, is this only for Kings County? Yes, um, this, is, this is a Kings County, this is membership for the Kings County ACES network of care. If you're coming from another county that has a network of care, we encourage you to contact them to see how they, um, what they do with their, if they have a membership process there. Um, we definitely encourage you to continue participating in our events because we're all learning and it's so important for us to hear. We've already learned so much from people coming from other communities who have joined these calls. So we're really grateful to have you here. But unfortunately, yes, 
Connie, this is specifically for the King, those serving Kings County. Thank you for asking that question. So now I would like to introduce Everardo Legaspi, and he's also goes by Lalo. He's the program manager for Kings County Public Health Department. Lalo is here to lead us in a discussion on the sustainability of this network of care in Kings County. Thank you so much for joining us, Lalo. Hi, uh, thank you, Stacy, and thank you everybody for having me. Um, so um, I've been a grants manager for the last three or four years of my career. Uh, before coming to the public health department. Uh, so when considering sustainability, I, I kind of approach it from that perspective, right? So uh, discussing sustainability in the context of programs and grants typically implies financial means to sustain the services beyond the current funding. Uh, sustainability as it pertains to the goal of cutting ACEs in half in this generation goes beyond the financial support, which was necessary to bring awareness about ACEs to communities throughout the state. <clears throat> Excuse me. The initial ACEs Aware grant funds serve the dual purpose of number one, increasing overall awareness of the prevalence of ACEs and the related health conditions, and number two, encouraging Medi Cal providers to complete the Becoming ACEs Aware core training in order to build Medi Cal $29 for conducting their related assessments. Um, simple goals, right? You just bring awareness, ACEs Aware. Uh, cutting ACEs in half in one generation necessitates much more than the completion of the initial assessment. Um, it requires an entire network of care, network of care present here today, uh, regardless of where our respective agencies and organizations are in completing the commitment to care tasks, including the toolkit, but being involved in the activities and uh, the network of care events that have been hosted over the past several months, you're all champions of the work to address ACEs. This is where we can all play a part in sustaining the energy and momentum present today. So in this sense, sustainability takes on a different meaning in that it does not necessarily involve dedicated dollars that may not be readily or currently available. The network of care that has been pulled together and organized around ACEs has been present in the community and has been made up of individual relations and past collaborations, which have now been more formalized. Um, by completing the commitment of care, com excuse me, completing the commitment to care activities and facilitating referrals by participating in the King's Referral Exchange, we're maximizing the limited resources present in the county for the benefit of all those we serve. Sustainability can be accomplished by viewing the services that we are already providing through an ACES informed lens and making the necessary connections. So, all interventions and, and responses have a cost associated with them, however, uh, some of which can be reimbursed through Medi-Cal and other state and or federal funded programs. In the Network of Care uh, Roadmap, um, the document prov uh, provided by the ACES Aware Initiative, Appendix B includes some strategies and examples of how to identify funding for or reimbursement for services provided that address ACEs and toxic stress. Uh, these sources of funds are already in place, uh, and the information that they provide in the uh, uh, Network of Care Roadmap um, demonstrates how providers can make connections between the work they're already doing and mitigating ACEs-related health conditions. Uh, there are a couple of examples of what they list on the, on the roadmap are, um, for instance, taking a look at the list of provider types eligible to bill Medi-Cal for services, which includes clinical social workers, uh, diabetes prevention programs, marriage and family therapists and psychologists amongst others. Not what we would normally or typically um, assume would be a Medi-Cal um, provider, right? Also the California's Mental Health Services Act, MHSA, um, prevention and early intervention programs um, account for about 20% of the bud, the funds from Proposition 63. So there's some funding available to address some of the issues, yet they're not specifically geared towards ACEs. We just need to view them through that ACEs informed lens. So these are just a couple of examples as we continue to recognize the prevalence of ACEs and their impact on our physical, emotional, and psychological well-being, we'll need to make the necessary connections for mitigating services. Cutting ACEs in half does not need to be a separate endeavor and can instead be incorporated into the work we are already doing. So 
you know, I'll leave you with a couple of questions to consider, which are um, what resources or programs or relationship uh, does your organization currently have in place that might help fill in the gaps and sustain this work going forward? Also, what sorts of funding, what sort of funding streams uh, are you aware of or can you identify that might support this type of work, whether it comes from local, state, private, or um, federal funding streams? Um, that will help support the sustainability of this uh, work. So we can, we actually have time to open this up and have a real discussion about this. So I want to repeat that question, the first question that Lalo had asked, which is what resources and relationships does your organization currently have in place that might help fill in the gaps and sustain this work? And you can feel free to share in the chat if you have any feedback on that question, or you can unmute yourself. And I can speak for um, California Health Collaborative. We have joined the referral exchange um, and we, I believe that we are definitely working to continue supporting Kings County um, by pursuing additional grants to um, support the community, whether it's working with children and families or, or in other capacities. Yeah, and, um, you know, perhaps what I was thinking with those questions is thinking about um, what other services are currently available to address some of the uh, ACEs, right? So if we think about like the PEARLS assessment and some of the questions that it asks uh, along exposure to domestic violence, say for instance, or victim of domestic violence, uh, well then, you know, in most counties in California, there's a, a uh, domestic violence survivor service provider, right? Either it's through the district attorney's office, victim witness services or a nonprofit that does provide some of those services. So even though it's not specific to as an identified ACE, it, there are counseling services. I know in Tulare County, for instance, they have uh, trauma-informed yoga for children, uh, for support groups for children that have been exposed to domestic violence. So it, it's services that we might already be working with or along with that mitigate some of the impacts of ACEs um, based on what the ACEs actually are, right? Uh, you know, for as far as SUDS and whatnot, uh, I mentioned the MHSA Act because, um, you know, there's quite a bit of services that counties are required to provide. Um, it's a little bit difficult to make that connection. And obviously there's stigma and other things to overcome, yet we need to think creatively about what we already have in place and how to make those connections. And I see that um, Freddie has uh, his hand up. You want to go ahead and share, Freddie? Yeah, hi, everyone. This is Freddie de la Paz. Um, I am the Community Engagement Coordinator with the Unidos por Salud Project. So we're a tobacco control uh, project um, funded to, to work and serve uh, Kings County, specifically Hanford. Um, so we are one of those projects that um, I think uh, you were all alluding to with your question. Um, we serve in a different capacity, not necessarily um, uh, specific to ACEs aware, but um, we are trauma informed in our approach. So as opposed to just trying to provide educational materials or information for the Hanford community regarding uh, tobacco use and prevention, we also uh, attempt or we aim to establish those relationships with uh, Hanford community, community members so that um, we can better gauge how we can, I guess, better serve them. Um, and that's through um, utilizing a, a trauma-informed approach. Uh, so one of those things that we can do as well that I feel that might, um, you know, help or rather contribute to the sustainability of uh, ACEs Aware, um, both as a program and as an initiative to cut the number in half, um, of ACEs would be to reach out to those uh, non-traditional partners, uh, not just people that are working in specific um, ACEs aware initiatives, but also those that might be loosely related to the initiatives we're working with. 
um, maybe chambers of commerce, maybe um, you know other um, NGOs. Um, you know, those are the the organizations and um, entities that are going to be around way past the time that we run out of our funded projects. So I feel like that's a very important thing that we need to look out for and have in our scope so that uh, long after we're gone, the work is still continuing, granted in a different capacity, but uh, at least the seeds are planted so that they can sprout from there. Thank, thank you, Freddie. Um, actually, that's uh, something I was thinking exactly about. Um, you know, some of those things that mitigate ACEs, right, which we know are healthy relationships, support, healthy supportive relationships, right? Um, counseling, therapy, support groups, all, all of these things that uh, encourage better health. Um, for instance, uh, last week we spoke with the city of Hanford about uh, uh, having a health fair or collaborating with them on a health fair, uh, you know, as a, as a public health department, not necessarily ACEs. Uh, yet I saw the connection between uh, something that helps mitigate the impact of ACEs related health uh, conditions, right? Which is exercising, healthy eating, and even like a, a sort of a, a healthy supportive relationship in, in that feeling part of a community and feeling supported and like doing exercise and like finding ways to eat healthy. Uh, we were discussing having a, a healthy eating food competition or, or classes on how to eat healthy on a budget and whatnot. And just seeing how that connects to ACEs, how that can help mitigate the impact of like a higher ACE score and uh, you know, providing those resources to the community and the people that we serve, right? Which are not what we would necessarily think uh, when, when it's been a, an assessment done by a medical provider, right? Um, if I may, I just want to, um, I, I just want to share, um, Freddie, I think that your, um, what you had to say is so important and that having um, doing our work in a trauma-informed manner uh, in a trauma-informed way is so important and we have talked about this at previous meetings but we do have access to free training um, for ourselves for our team members for friends co-workers family we live in a world where people have experienced trauma um, and some folks have experienced a lot of trauma and COVID has not been kind to a lot of people. So Freddie, I think I really appreciate your statement about how important it is to do our work in a way that's trauma informed. And I just wanna congratulate you and, and on, on making that statement and wanna reiterate its importance because um, I, I think we have access to training that positions us to do our work better. And do any of our other um, attendees here today have, have anything that they're, or they know their organizations are doing that are part of this? It may, maybe it doesn't seem like it if you're not, maybe your organization is not a member of the network of care. But as Freddie said, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not working to sustain this work to cut ACEs in half. So just wanting us to think outside of that box of our membership of what is it that you're doing now that's sustaining this, whether it is providing direct um, stress mitigating services or connecting people to those services in the community. And even if you're coming from a different county as well, because as I said before, it's always great for us, all of us to learn from each other across the state, as far as what is working in your community. Um, how are you reaching people? How are you serving them? As that can be a real uh, great learning opportunity for us here in Kings County as well. And I did see a question from Claudia earlier, and I just wanted to maybe get a little clarification. Um, is there a cost for sharing best practices with other counties? I wasn't sure exactly what you meant by a cost for sharing best practices. Would you be able to clarify that? 
Sure. Um, my, my question is uh, in regard whether it's a sort of like a formal consultation. So if uh, a county calls, calls you up, would there be a fee that they would need to um, you know, pay for uh, using the time. I mean, you know, time is is really valuable, and I'm wondering about you know, ten counties calling you all asking, you know, asking for help. So I didn't know if perhaps you had built in uh, some kind of, you know, fee that would go into your into your system, a consultation fee. I see. I do not believe there is a cost. Linda was answering you in the chat. Um, we're open. Well, I could I can yeah. jump in here, Crystal Ford, Stacey. Um, very great question, Claudia. We have been connecting one-on-one -on -one with several counties across Central Valley and beyond to provide any support for best practices or an adaptation of our pre-existing resources. And we are beyond helpful, I'm happy rather with the support of our multi-agency collaboration to continue to offer this support to other organizations in need because we value the importance of this work and we want to ensure that everyone feels supported um, and have access to all these wonderful resources we've developed to support you all. So please reach out to myself on email. Um, if it is communication related, I will refer you over to Karina who's in a call with us, with us today and she has very valuable resources to support you as well. I, I have another question then if, if you don't mind. Um, first of all, I'd like to commend you for, um, you know, having the big hearts that you do to help other other agencies, or you know, establish a network of care because uh, these things eat, eat up time for everybody, and time is is certainly not uh, a commodity in large supply. So um, let's say that we're wanting to put together um, our our own toolkit for our own county and um, are there any kind of uh, uh, proprietary information there or you know a former English teacher here so I'm I'm, look, I'm questioning because of you know uh, plagiarism I anyway I have to ask <laughs> absolutely that is a very great question in regard to the toolkit I'll be referring to Karina to support us or responding on that she's taking leadership and really guiding other counties who are adapting our toolkit um, with uh, clarity and support. So Karina? Yeah, um, so I do have kind of like an outline that I like to just go over with anybody that um, is interested and kind of go over why we wanted these uh, sections and why we thought they were important, um, but also how we as Kings County made them specific to our community and vice versa, how you could then transform that section to um, relate to your community. Because if you do go through our toolkit, you will see that you can't actually word for word take the whole thing because it is very Kings County centered, um, but that just, makes it, uh, you know, gives you opportunity to find out um, how to make it specific to your own county also. Um, so if you are interested, um, I'm definitely open to sitting with you and discussing that. Um, I can discuss our process and how we thought things out. Um, I can even show you kind of like how we designed it and all of that stuff. We've done it before with other counties and we're definitely um, very open to doing it again because we love to see, um, you know, each other help as we, you know, build healthier communities. So I will put my email in the chat and you can always email me if you're interested. Thank you so much. I certainly will be. And I see there's a question from Lolly. Wait a minute. Hi, well, no, I, I wanted to comment in regards to um, sustainability. This is Lali um, from Anthem Blue Cross. And I think that um, I know Linda and, and I, we've, we've spoken uh, multiple times regarding what this would look like and what kind of support entities or actually organizations such as a health fund can support in regards to ACEs aware. And so one of the things that we're deeply looking into at Anthem, it's, it's not only, you know, we come from a provider perspective and we, we have other things that we can, you know, bring to the table. And so one of the things that we've been talking about is, you know, from our standpoint, we are here to support the, the residents of Kings County, of course. And so 
you know, it may look a little bit different, but, you know, one of the things that we're really invested in, you know, is ensuring that, you know, our providers are trained um, to, um, you know, on ACEs and ensuring that they're screening um, for ACEs and then that, you know, we're looking at um, ways to ensure that our members are also receiving the services that um, were identified as needed based on this ACEs scoring. Um, we're also working internally, you know, um, um, you know, and this is something that I know some people are really interested in, some are not so much, but um, looking at, you know, tracking data and ensuring that we're, we're also um, seeing, you know, from county to county, um, how our members are doing. Um, but other things that we can certainly bring to the table and, and really be part of the sustainability effort is, is really supporting the community um, moving forward. Um, we have case management on our team that, you know, we can, again, um, ensure that we're engaged with those entities who are needing support or who have we're seeing our members for, you know, um, ACES um, follow-up. Um, we have health educators. I think one of our health educators is online too. You know, we always have the opportunity to offer um, community education to a member to our members. So if this is something that you know we we would um, see as beneficial, um, we're always able to and willing to partner with any entity who would like to. Um, have us at the table and, and partner and collaborate in multiple um, multiple areas, really anywhere from you know provider training, case management, health education, and and supporting your efforts as well. I know Kings County is a, is a small county, but it's one that is really close um, knit, and everybody's you know almost seems to know everyone. Um, I am pretty new to Anthem. I am pretty new to working in Kings County um, in general. So, but I do, I do want to offer, um, you know, and, and let you know that Anthem is here to support you and to partner and collaborate in any ways possible. So if, you know, I'll put maybe my info in the chat, if there's anyone who um, would like to connect um, um, offline, you know, I'd be glad to um, to do so and ensure that we are um, communicating and we are um, supporting each other in, in this in this um, in this area so um, that's all it was just really comments no no not necessarily a question so thank you um, Stacy and and thank you Linda for the opportunity to to share our commitment to aces aware Thank you, Lolly. That was really great um, to hear what you guys are doing to sustain this work. That's exactly what we're hoping to hear from people. So we really appreciate you sharing that. Does anyone else have anything that they want to share regarding sustaining the work of, of addressing ACEs in the community? Um, whether you're a medical, um, your organization is a medical providing organization or community-based organization, or do you have any questions about what that could look like? I do want to say that in our last network of care, we talked about, um, and I, I mentioned this briefly at the very beginning, in our last network of care, we talked about trauma-informed care policies and practices as a part of that sustainability. And we already heard a couple of people talking about that as a, as a, a pathway for delivering services in a trauma-informed way, but we're also thinking about it internally of how do we sustain this work and make sure our providers are not experiencing compassion fatigue and burnout, that that trauma-informed approach is being taken within, uh, or staff, if it's not a medical um, organization, that we're trauma-informed within and without. And do any of the organizations, any people here today, have anything to say with regard to that? Is that a path that any of you are starting on? Um, have, you, have you begun those conversations with your leaders about shifting policies to a trauma-informed approach? So um, actually at the health department, um, 
we're starting to look into implementing, um, well, for now we're calling a wellness committee uh, for our staff. Um, obviously, uh, we've been working um, pretty hard the, the last year and a half or so. Um, and with cases again on the rise, our staff is again uh, stretched thin and um, just like the rest of the community, um, you know, people, we're not immune to uh, COVID, right? Um, so, um, as such, we've been, you know, considering um, starting something. And before the most recent surge, we actually had some traction, had a couple of meetings and emails sent out, leadership was buying in to establish a wellness committee to specifically uh, address those issues. Um, you know, just to address the, the resiliency of the organization overall um, after some, something as, as difficult to deal with as COVID. So um, that is something that is, you know, always, obviously being considered even at the health department at wanna. Um, yet, you know, the, the, probably the impetus for establishing that committee or taking a look at it is impacting our ability to implement it, you know. So uh, COVID kind of motivated us to uh, get something going like that. And at the same time, it's limiting our capacity to get it implemented right away. But um, I've worked at other nonprofits where that was something that was uh, implemented while I was there. Just, um, you know, making sure that staff and burnout and vicarious trauma and whatnot um, it's something that's considered and not just the, the, the people that we serve, um, but that people that are providing the services are also care for, right? I come from that environment, Lalo, uh, domestic violence and homeless work, and, um, and I carried over some of those um, team building um, strategies with me to United Way. So on a quarterly basis, our team, uh, we've done a lot of breakout rooms. Uh, we finally learned how to break out we have a strategy now. <laughs> um, we've learned a lot about each other. Um, we have uh, done scavenger hunts. We have done um, a lot of cool things to just stop. Uh, oh, we've had, we've done paint. I think one of my favorites was having someone come in and we did canvas painting. Each had our own canvas and did painting. That was awesome. But I think it's, it's just a time to stop reflect, share, engage, um, kind of debrief. And I would encourage um, all leaders to consider those types of activities to um, really, um, I think it's a recognition by leadership that sometimes you just need to um, take care of each other and support each other. Um, Thank you guys so much for sharing that. Um, sorry, <laughs> I've got my five-year-old in here digging around, so I apologize if there's noise in the background. Um, does anyone else have anything they wanna share with regard to that sustainability? Um, remember, we're thinking outside the box. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're becoming a member of the network of care today. It could mean I'm starting a conversation with my leaders today. It could mean, um, my colleagues and I have been talking about ACES and they're, they're very interested in learning more and they're talking about getting that training done. This is all, it's all a process, right? And wherever each of us is on this spectrum is a good place to be because we're all traveling, we're all growing toward this, this um, preventing this from happening in our communities and, and mitigating these issues in our communities. And it takes time for us to build momentum and for us to keep it going. And I wanna appreciate everyone who's here, everyone who's doing the work now. So um, if no one else has anything they wanna share now, that is totally fine. We welcome you to email us if you wanted to just share privately, if there's any new developments within your organizations, or again, if you are experiencing any barriers or challenges. I was right, you were wrong. Yeah. Okay, you found it, good job. And I also see that Freddie has his hands raised. Um, Freddie, did you have a question or a comment for us? Yeah, thank you, Linda. Um, I did wanna um, put forth just the idea of uh, providing certain educational materials to spark people's interests, possibly at the lobbies of um, you know, elected officials, whether it be City Hall or maybe um, you know, those, those spaces where people frequent for official purposes, almost to make it 
make the information legitimized in a certain way. Um, that's just an idea that I was thinking because I've used that tactic in the past when it comes to tobacco control related information. Um, so they don't, it doesn't seem like they're getting it from someone who's, you know, not as credible as a institution like City Hall or whatever it might be. Thank you so much, Freddie, for your um, comments. Um, you've really been a beneficial factor in the inclusion of the statements and supporting the sustainability and continuity of this work. Um, I also see there's a comment in the chat from Stacy um, stating if there has been any success in reaching out to local faith-based communities and leaders. Um, we have um, really made um, a lot of uh, significant efforts in communicating and reaching out to key stakeholder sectors that are noted in the Network of Care Roadmap, which includes our faith-based um, communities and leaders. Uh, we've been interacting with them um, and communicating in all updates with them as well. Um, most significantly, we just released the Dare Kings County video, which we hope to share in our network um, in our upcoming conference, which we're really excited to share with you all in the next slide. Um, this county video, this Kings County, their Kings County video shows the commitment of our, of our community at large in being a part of this work. And we're really happy to have the representation of our faith-based community um, leader uh, within that video as well. Um, we also has, have worked with them to also support the integration of our, um, the stress buster will to ensure that their services are well understood in, um, in the role that they play in mitigating toxic stress. So thank you so much for that comment, Stacey, um, it's really important that we include all key sectors um, as noted in the Network of Care Roadmap, which we'll be happy to share if we have some additional time left in this um, um, meeting today, but we highly encourage all our Network of Care partners, um, especially with our event that is occurring next month, if you have any partners within our key stakeholder list, we beg you to please um, invite them to join us in this really wonderful discussion, especially when we are covering sustainability. Oh, thank you so much, Stacey, for doing a wonderful job of sharing that link with us. Um, right here, you can see these are our key stakeholders that um, ACES Aware has informed us, show and um, provide impactful contribution to this work. Um, all the way from primary care providers to early intervention services, um, tribal organizations, faith-based organizations, as mentioned, and CBOs. Um, so we hope um, and we beg your support um, and your commitment to please not only um, complete the incentivized page um, on our toolkit, but also integrate your services within the Unite Us platform, um, also known as the Kings of Horror Exchange System, as this will really support our community as we begin to screen, treat, and heal. Um, thank you. Stacey, you are on mute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was just thanking you, Linda, for reminding me of those pages in our toolkit um, that show those um, those sectors, those key sectors that we're hoping to connect with, some of which we already have and we're building relationships with. And again, if you're in Kings County and you already have relationships with organizations in those key sectors, we encourage you to support our work by, by building those bridges as well and inviting them to join these events, inviting them to, to communicate with us so that we can um, move that those relationships forward and, and really bring them into this work. And with that, as Linda had mentioned, we are having an event coming up in September. Um, rather than having a network of care event, we're gonna be hosting um, a, a bigger event. And unfortunately due to the healthcare crisis going on, while we would really love to be able to do this in person, we're gonna be doing this um, out of, out of uh, concern for all of our safety and wellness. We're gonna be doing this virtually. Um, and we're gonna be focusing on a number of topics in this event um, and showing a, a lot of the progress that we've made throughout the course of our grant period here in Kings County. Um, so we really would invite all of you to save that date and, and join us and encourage your leaders to join us. Um, encourage those other key sector folks that you know of to join this event. 
so that they can learn about it and, and become a part of this growing network of care. And um, in support of Stacy's statement, um, I know we provided a general September 20th um, save the date. Um, we also are highly encouraging the target audience for this event um, to be yourselves who are in this meeting, but also your leaders, um, your partners, um, and our provider networks, um, clinical leaders to be in attendance. Um, although we have um, set aside five hours for this event, you might ask, what do the times fall under? Uh, we are still in the process of um, completing those items in order to send over your way in your inbox, but I would highly recommend that you do block up the whole day um, if you would love to, just because we would want to also make ourselves available to connect with you all continuously one on one. If you would like to schedule a quick five minute brief call during that day outside of the conference hours, I personally will make myself available to connect with you and answer any questions that you might have to prepare your full um, um, uh, what's the word, your full uh, attendance uh, work in the during the conference to make sure that you're really having a large takeaway. Thank you. And does anyone have any questions so far about, we know, I know we've covered a lot during today's event and um, some people might be feeling unsure. There's nothing like a wrong question and we wanna be able to fully support you as well if there are any pending questions. Right, and we respect if there are no questions at this time, we're also available to connect with you on email later or on phone call or on Zoom. Um, lastly, we, we would like to highly encourage your um, completion of our evaluation survey for today, today's event. Um, in attention to this evaluation, um, we would like to ask that you please refer to question number seven, uh, where it might ask you what organization hosted the activity for today. Um, with that, we ask that you please put Kings County ACES Network of Care. And I'll just provide that information in the chat as well. Um, thank you so much, Ronnie, for providing that survey link. Um, most importantly as well, um, if you are having any difficulty accessing this survey or completing it, um, please email us. We're also available for that technical support. Um, also with the mentioned activities such as the ABC worksheet, the completion of the um, training, the core training provided by ACES Aware in order to be awarded your incentives. If you're having any complications accessing our toolkit, we are available for that technical support. Um, that one-on-one -on -one support is fully there for you to please access amongst our teams. And we are a large team to provide uh, much adequate support to your, um, that, that fits your need. Um, and with that, we would love to close out with an amazing raffle opportunity, which we very much love to host for those who stay with us to the very end. Um, Stacey has prepared some wonderful questions for you all, so I will turn it over to Stacey.